What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video, we're talking about Intermediate Guitar Theory 101. So let's go. Cool. So like today's video title mentions, today's video is Intermediate Guitar 101. This is a topic that I really wanted to talk about because a common question I get asked is, I'm an intermediate guitar player. What is my entry point to guitar theory? Or like, what is the basic guitar theory that if I don't already know, I should focus on? And 99% of the time, today's video topic are with the answers I mentioned. You know, the first one being, you should really have a good understanding of the notes on your fingerboard. And that can be just by practicing identifying one single note. For example, let's identify G. Identifying, let's say, um, B flat. It could be practicing a more tedious way by going fret by fret. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, etc., all the way up to the octave. It could also be by practicing, you know, identifying all the notes on a single fret across the fingerboard, right? So for example, let's identify the notes on the third fret. G, C, F, B flat, D, F. How about now the, um, let's do seventh fret. B, E, A, D, F sharp, B. You know, notes on fingerboard, it's a very boring subject. But it is one that in the long run and with the continuing topics we talk about will really expand your fretboard knowledge. <clears throat> the next topic I always talk about, even on the channel, is your knowledge of triads, specifically major and minor. In the past, I would always talk about as well, augmented and diminished triads. But the reality is 99% of the music we play will have major or minor chords. And by practicing triads, you should have a really good understanding of, let's say we're in the key of C, of playing your triads up, and then across. etc. across the whole fingerboard, as well as minor. And then across. Instantly, that'll open the whole fingerboard up so when you're in a jam and someone's playing, let's say, you can do. and that instantly widens out the guitar parts. Super, super cool, super useful. The next topic I always talk about is the caged system. You know, play, being able to identify your A shape C chord, your G shape C chord, 
E shape C chord. there as well and by using those starting points practicing your major scale your major pentatonic as well as your minor pentatonic continue on your A shape, your G shape, E shape, D shape, and C shape. Those three together with caged as our foundation or roadmap opens up the whole guitar. So essentially combining that with your triads, you can really play any song and when it comes to soloing or making phrases anywhere you want. Also, which at Berkeley they really stressed, was also practicing, you know, with caged three octave scales, you know, essentially figuring out a route that can get you from third fret A, C, all the way up to, what would that be? That would be 15, 17, 19, 20 fret high C, you know? like that and you would again focus on major scale major pentatonic and minor pentatonic so in essence we're taking these simple topics so far notes on the fingerboard triads caged and just expanding them throughout the whole guitar right simple topic but let's use the whole instrument now the following topic is one that, in a perfect world, you would have a great understanding, but it's not like a life or death situation, but I still like my students to have at least a, uh, a fairly basic grasp of key signatures. You know, understanding that when you're in the key of C major, you have no sharps or flats. But when you're in the key of, let's say, A, you have three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, you know? Matching or along the same lines as key signatures, I highly encourage the understanding of the diatonic chords in whatever key you're playing and combine that with triads. That will look something like this. Let's say we're on the key of C major. Easy key, no sharps or flats. You can start practicing it by C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, C major. And you would go, I guess, uh, each string set up and across, you know, C, D, E, F, G, The next step you would take is those same um, diatonic chords, but now with the emphasis on the least amount of movement. You know, C, D, E minor, F, G, A, B, C. C, D, E minor, F, G, A minor, again, up and down the fingerboard and across. And the last topic, which may be the most important out of these previous four, is the ability to play songs top to bottom. That is 
so, so important. There are times where I watch other YouTube channels, you know, that are predominantly more gear focused. And I ask myself, can these people play a song top to bottom? And this really hit home to me many years ago when I was starting to play guitar, when I went to a lesson and I had just learned a phrasing from Metallica's From Whom the Bell Tolls. And my teacher at the time said, but can you play the whole song? At which point I couldn't, you know, I only focus on the riff. And since then, and as I've progressed in my own guitar playing journey and as through teaching, playing a song top to bottom is crucial because you don't want to be that person that only knows how to play the riff or the solo. You know, they want the person that can play the song top to bottom with confidence, with a good rhythm, good tempo, you know. And then you can always add your phrasing and soloing. But the ability to play a song top to bottom will instantly get you the gig, hopefully. <laughs> so with that being said, those are the five topics that I really stress to intermediate guitar players that want to expand their guitar theory. Again, not really life-changing topics, but topics that I have, you know, through teaching realized that are really crucial foundations that you can always build on and that open the guitar up totally. Well, all right, guys, that is today's video, Intermediate Guitar Theory 101. If you wish to further expand these topics, I do offer Zoom lessons. My email will be down below. And feel free to reach out, whether for lessons or any questions you have about this video. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.